take a look at the engagement activity. All right, we'll just zoom in here so we can get a, get a closer look. So with the engagement activity, uh, the purpose behind it is for you to be able to research and identify, firstly, uh, a political issue, uh, research it both with secondary research and primary research, so actually becoming involved in the research by meeting people, having interviews, and also analyzing the political issue to write a 2,000 word written report. So let's take a look at the first step. Oh, sorry. First step is to identify an issue and activity, which is probably the most difficult part of it. Once you have that, then you're, you're ready to go. So you have to think of an issue that is important to you. Is it gender equality, uh, something to do with child soldiers, uh, genocide in the Rome Statute, something to do with development. So identifying that issue first will help you and then you can go past that issue to an actual engagement activity. So if you're looking at development, do you want to go to a UNDP office and speak to someone there about activities that are happening within the country? If it's genocide, do you want to collect survivor stories or talk to NGOs about the work that they're doing there as far as reconciliation? Um, child soldiers, similarly, uh, looking at NGOs and what they're doing there and how they're spreading awareness. Um, if you're looking at gender equality, maybe it's going to your local UN Women office. Maybe it's going to an equality demonstration or a pride festival and interviewing some of the organizers there. So that is the, the first thing, is looking at the issue that, you, that you're interested in and an activity that can be, I guess, uh, taken from that. The second step is uh, to take that political issue and activity and then somehow form a research question from that, which is similar to what you would be doing uh, with your EEs. So some examples here of, of pretty good um, research questions. One would be, uh, why are women underrepresented in elected political office in the UK? So we have the issue there of... Uh, women empowerment um, and we're looking at political office and that would sort of bring us to an activity where you would maybe uh, talk to members of, of the political office in the UK and see, say why aren't women there. Maybe you're talking to female MPs and seeing what were their struggles coming up through the system. Uh, another example might be what are the challenges faced by Human Rights Watch in responding to LGBTQ discrimination? Uh, and you'd probably isolate this to a particular country, let's say Japan. So with that, again, the, the issue is looking at uh, discrimination against the LGBTQ community. You're looking at a specific NGO and you're looking at the challenges that they're faced with uh, in, in tackling this issue. So an activity might be visiting the, the Office of Human Rights Watch and talking about this issue and seeing what plans they have in place, maybe collecting stories from, from people that they've worked with. Oh, sorry, rotating there. Um, so, uh, again, could involve a meeting, could involve an interview. Um, for some of your political engagements, uh, it, it may require Skype, so that's something you might want to think about if it's difficult to travel, um, those kinds of things. So the, the third step, we're going to look at, at some tips. And one of them is being an effective note taker. So having some way in which you're collecting information when you're out in the field. Um, that could be handwritten notes here, like on this little clipboard, or using a device in an app such as maybe uh, Evernote. If you don't have Evernote or haven't checked it out, check it out. It's, it's really good. You can type notes in there, but you can also have video that are within a document and also voice recording. So uh, having some sort of strategy where you're effectively uh, taking notes and also noting the date and time and all those important things for, for footnoting and other things. Um, another important point is to keep the research question in mind the whole time that you're out in the field doing research because sometimes um, based on how a conversation goes with maybe an NGO or someone else, we get off track and we forget what we're actually looking at. So it's important to have that well-formed research question and even inform those people that you're going to talk with even beforehand or even during the interview what your research question is so that they're keeping you focused as well. Um, 
Another one is secondary research. Uh, don't depend completely on primary research, even though it is an important part of the task. You may have to go to some, some books that are around. You may have to go to some websites. Um, again, this is a website that we use a lot. Uh, it's called refworld.org. Uh, and within that, you can do searches for different topics. Um, and then you can choose by, by country and you'll get all kinds of official documents from uh, UN agencies and NGOs. So uh, the point of secondary research too is also to have those different viewpoints and perspectives represented. If you're talking to just one NGO, you're just going to get that one NGO perspective. Um, but the issue is usually far more complex, so you want to look at what other people are saying about it. Uh, another tip is keeping key concepts in mind, and we'll work on this in class. But it's uh, connecting key concepts to your issue and activity so that it has clear links to the global politics course and content because that is definitely assessed. So it could be uh, key concepts like nonviolence, interdependence, equality, power, or any of the other ones that we, that we look at. Lastly, let's look at the, the assessment criteria. So uh, it's broken into four parts. We see A, B, C, and D. Uh, with A, we're looking at identification of the issue and justification. So you have to justify why it's important as well. So that will be the first part of your report is uh, describing the issue, describing the activity, or that will be part B actually, sorry. Um, and justifying the issue, why it's important and why you want to study it. B is explanation of the engagement. What are you uh, doing? Where are you going? Who are you talking to? And why is that helping you to explore this issue? Um, last one will be analysis, of, oh sorry, C will be analysis of the issue, where you are uh, looking at the issue from all points of view, seeing what uh, kind of social, political impact this is having in the community uh, and at all levels. Uh, analysis of the issue, it's also important to note here that you can bring in those different levels of analysis that we talk about in, uh, in global politics, such as regional, national, international. All those things are good to bring in. Uh, and also the different perspectives, those uh, individual and group perspectives, such as uh, religion, ethnicity, those kinds of things. Oh, let me get the color editor off here. And uh, the last part is synthesis and evaluation. So uh, evaluating the, the success of your engagement, uh, bringing all of what you've learned together to sort of see, okay, what have I learned from this uh, exploration, um, evaluating success again, and uh, just wrapping things up. So I, I hope that's helpful. We'll, we'll take a look at it uh, a little bit more, but hopefully this, this sort of visual helps you see all the parts together that we're, that we're going to be looking at. All right.